SEC Media Days just 10 days away. Who do we think will represent Auburn in one of the biggest off-season events of the year? Breathing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked on Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked on Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining me as he does often on the show, the everydayers know him, Daryl Dapridge, Montgomery Radio veteran and the most handsome man on the planet. Daryl, we're getting closer and closer to media days. You're excited. I'm excited. I think a lot of people throughout the college football world uh, excited just because it's something New. It's something where we'll get to hear Hugh Freeze, and we'll talk about some of the big narratives that'll surround Auburn and some things that we'll want answered later. We'll also touch on Malik Blocked, and he's expected to uh, announce and be committed to the Tigers tomorrow over the course of the weekend. We'll touch on that as well. But first things first, who should represent the Auburn Tigers in this big offseason event? Daryl, it's always a big deal, and I think Auburn has a ton of different candidates that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, I want to touch before we go into the candidates just to set up what you talked about or to piggyback, you know, why SEC Media Days is such a big deal here and especially with down south and in this area is because it really signifies the kickoff, unofficial kickoff of college football season. Sure. It's amazing to me that every year the hype just seems to grow and grow, except for maybe last year a little bit from an Auburn perspective with the sellout situation in season tickets and yeah. that record deal that happened. It's why we're seeing this fever pitch. So I think this is, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to say this is one of the largest and most anticipated SEC media days for Auburn fans because of that and because of getting to hear you free. So it is very important when you're talking about how special this one is, who Auburn brings. So I think that, you know, it's fun to always speculate to kind of see how close you are. Um, if you want, I'll go ahead and give you my three. Sure, that go ahead. Think, um, that I think that Auburn will have. I think Jason Jones, DJ James, and Javarius Johnson. I think you don't want to bring somebody that's new to the program, that's not been an Auburn letterman before, regardless of how much of a leader they are or how much of an impact they're going to make. I think you would probably shy away from that because you want somebody that has been on the field and represented Auburn before. And I don't think you want to go heavy on one side of the ball i.e. having three defensive players or three offensive players. So that's why I like that mix. There's some leadership there, some experience there, and some guys that are supposedly going to be counted on heavily for Auburn. Yeah, I uh, I think Jason Jones makes a ton of sense. And in fact, at AuburnDaily.com, the staff, we both put our, our picks up there, and Jason Jones was the most popular name. One that's interesting to me, is, is, to me that you say is Javarius Johnson because – I think he's going to have an impact. Heck, he could be a candidate to be a breakout player this year, just with the way, you know, I think the scheme is going to help him. And you've talked in the past about the addition of Rivaldo Fairweather being big for Javaris Johnson. There's just more to worry about in the middle of the field for defenses now than there used to be um, with what Hugh Freeze and Philip Montgomery, we think, is going to do to the offense. So it makes a lot of sense. I just, we've never really heard about him being a leader. We've never heard anything to the contrary either. I'm not saying that he's not, but we just haven't ever really heard that. And so a lot of this is, you know, when, when, when coaches pick who's going to represent them in the program at media days, a lot of it has to do with leadership. You know, I asked you Freeze a few weeks into spring, you know, who were the leaders that, that, you know, have st stood up and like, he didn't mention anybody in the wide receiver room. So I was a little surprised that you said Javarius Johnson. You know, it's funny, great, great points. And I love, um, you know, the deep dive as to why. And I hate to say this in a disrespectful way, but it was almost by default because I felt like you had to have an offensive representative. I'm with you. Well, maybe you don't, but who on the offensive line? Everybody is newcomers, right? If you go to the quarterback position, allegedly newcomer. You look at the other wide receivers, newcomers. And then, I mean, you know, I don't want to have to say it, the elephant in the room. Maybe it would have been Jarquez Hunter, but Probably not some either. of the things that happened, you know, allegedly in the offseason, that's not necessarily maybe something that, that you do. 
So from a running back room standpoint, you, you've got really nobody with experience other than Hunter. Uh, receiver, I think Johnson starts. I think he starts in the slot. Yeah. Won't this be his fourth year at Auburn, I believe? Um, Sounds right. So that's why. And it's almost by default. And they could take three defensive players, or they might only bring two uh, players totally. I've seen that happen before. They took two during the COVID year. I think every other year it's been three. So I think we're expecting three this year. The I, I think Tate Johnson would go before Javaris Johnson would. Hmm. Interesting. It, you know, I guess it, it it's that old adage: Would you bring somebody that you're not counting on to be a starter or a high? See, I mean, the year that like you talked about, they brought two. They brought Bo Nix and Owen Papo. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know the fo- – look, every coach has a different formula or blueprint on who they want to take. That's right. True. So it, maybe Hugh Freeze doesn't look at the fact that someone's not – have not has not played a, a snap at Auburn yet, and he looks at how they've asserted themselves in the short time they've been here as a leader. Maybe you could be a leader and not necessarily start. There's all different variables to that, and we'll see. We'll know what his – you know, how he's thinking and what his line of thinking is when it gets announced. And we saw, you know, Chandler Wooten be voted team captain, and he wasn't technically a starter because yeah. until Owen went down, he had to play a lot more. And then he became one. But yeah, you're right. I mean, you, everybody's criteria is going to be different. I just think it's interesting. And this was months ago, right? This was a while ago. The roster is literally like fifty percent different than it was when we asked this question. But you know, the the first guy out of his mouth was Tate Johnson, mm-hmm. which is telling. And Tate was the topic of a few questions prior to that, too. So, like, Tate could have been on you know, the, the forefront of Hugh's mind when he answered that question. Then it was Jason Jones. We both agree. I think Jason will be there. He was the most popular answer of the Auburn Daily staff. And then he said the entire tight end room. And to your point, like, I don't think he'll take Rafaldo Fairweather just because he's new as a transfer. But Luke Deal was one of my three that I said. I said Jason Jones, Rivaldo Fairweather, and... DJ James. So we agreed on two of them. We're differing on the offensive player. No, you I said, said deal. Deal, not fair weather, right? I said deal. deal yeah, yeah. Just, just because he talked about them being leaders in the room. And I also think, you know, he, I think he'd represent Auburn well. I think he's solid. I think culturally he's what Hugh Freeze wants. Not that any of these guys aren't, but he's just been here. He's been in the program. And like you said, I agree with you. Unless he wants to just really stick his chest out and bring the quarterback, bring the new quarterback, I think Luke Deal makes sense. Don't you think it would be telling and the and, and the suspense is over if he was to bring Peyton Thorne to Let's SEC? Let's talk about media this days? in a second, Daryl. Let's talk yeah. about this. What happens if you freeze brings Peyton Thorne to media days? We discuss in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. You take your first swing at betting on MLB at, uh, on FanDuel. If, if you do that, wow, I butchered that. If you do that, you get 10 times your first bet and uh, bonus bets up to $200. So if you bet 20 bucks, Daryl, you get 200 back. Win or lose. That's what they call a win-win situation in the business. There's no reason not to hop over to FanDuel. And look, it's all on an app and a website that's extremely safe, super easy to use, very, very secure with your money and your information. And the big thing, look, a lot of sports books you'll win, and then it's really hard to get your money back. That is Mm -hmm. not the case with FanDuel. With FanDuel, you can get your money back instantly. It's all processed through their app. There's no better place to bet on Major League Baseball or college football futures than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So once again, FanDuel.com slash locked on to get that $200 in bonus bets. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball and the Locked On Podcast Network. Daryl Daprich, what happens if Hugh Freeze brings Peyton Thorne? I mean, what a whirlwind. What a statement that would be. It would be chaotic, and it would be a buzz, and it would tell me who the starter was. I mean, you wouldn't do that because you're basically – conceding right. the quarterback race, in my right. opinion, in July, before they even get on campus and start practicing where it's supposed to be a quarterback battle, you're declaring that race over, in my opinion, if you bring Thorne to media days. That's why I don't think that'll happen. I know that Gus was very, very uh, – in 2019, of course, Bo Nix was a freshman, so you wouldn't want to bring a freshman anyway. Uh, but it, it's just interesting uh, how that all works out because if you, like I said, if you do it, 
you're declaring who your starter is. The race is over, suspense well, is over, drama's over. Well, we talked about this last year where it's like, but remember at this time, we were all hyping up Calzada, right? Right. It's like, what if he just brought Zach Calzada? What a statement that would be. Obviously, that's a laughable thing now, but it was discussed. I think it's somewhat similar. I think we feel a little bit better about Peyton Thorne than we do Zach Calzada. But still, like it'd be a similar type conversation. Um, and it also sounds like Peyton's really just winning folks over left and right based off of whoever he talks to. And like he's thrown to the receivers and like Robbie's not there. Like I, I do think it's a little bit different. I do think it's a little bit different. It would still surprise me. But man, you talk about kind of like Hugh Freeze just go ahead and sticking his chest out and saying, oh. This is my dude. Like, yeah, it'd make national news. And you know, I mean, you just talk about like Hugh Freeze coming because the, the biggest narrative, and he's going to be asked this on every radio show he goes on, Coach, what's it like to be back at SEC Media Days? Like, yeah. he's going to answer that question a million times. Um, when he would go, I guess, I think he's on Tuesday, like, and, and like, what better way to be reinstated and say, I'm back by like really making the, the the national headline of saying, yes, Peyton Thorne's my quarterback. It'd be the big it'd be the second biggest declaration uh <laughs> in the month of July that we've celebrated, right? The first nice. being July 4th, and then this one. Um, it would be. That's exactly what it is. It would be an announcement, it'd be a pronouncement, it'd be a declaration of I'm back, here's my quarterback, deal with it. Uh, but I don't think he'll go that route. And I, don't, and I don't think he'll go that route because I don't think he wants to alienate Robbie Ashford. And I think he does want this to be a, a job that even though he's got his sights set on Peyton Thorne, yeah. I think he wants there to be an appearance of a real quarterback competition because I've said this before, and I'll keep beating the drum, he's going to use Robbie Ashford in certain situations. I, I, I feel like he is. And I know some people disagree with me, but I think there will be packages for Robbie Ashford in certain sure. areas of the field to keep him engaged and to use his certain skill set, the dynamic of his legs and that type of thing, that he'll use Ashford. And I think that's a good move. I think as long as Ashford takes care of the football and is heady with the reads and what he's supposed to do, he will get some packages for him. You don't want to alienate him if you're wanting to do that later on. And regardless of if he brings a quarterback or not, that's still going to be the biggest kind of conversation around whoever is coming and representing Auburn at media days, whether it's freeze, whether it's the three players, if, especially if the, whoever is on offense. It's like, so what are you thinking about the quarterback situation? I mean, it's going to be that. It's going to be timeline. That was a big thing with Brian Harson last year that I got to ask him, you know, what about the timeline? What's the goal here? Um, so, I mean, to me, Regardless of who you bring, it's still all about the quarterback battle. It is, and I think I would, you know, the, the the easy question and the lazy question to me is, how's the quarterback competition coming along? What's you know, not saying that asking about timelines lazy, but that's going to be asked a lot. I would love to do a deep dive and say, okay, give me specifics of how Peyton Thorne has acclimated to the Auburn atmosphere and endeared himself to his teammates. I want mm -hmm. specific examples. Yeah. How is how how is he commanding the room? What is he doing to be a leader and to have those guys follow him? And I'd love to hear specifics about that. I think that's the biggest narrative. The quarterback race is a given. That's out there. Everybody knows it. Sure. Unless he brings Thorn, it's still up in the air. Um, I think your point to the timeline is very interesting because I would want to know, all right, Coach, when do you want to have – it's set. When do you want that quarterback announced? How much time left in fall camp? That type of thing. He may go right up to week before kickoff. I've seen coaches do that before announcing the starter. But I want to know specifically what Peyton Thorne has done since he's been here, since he's been here for almost two months at the time of SEC Media Days, to acclimate himself to the coaches, staff, and players. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Uh, other, other kind of narratives that you think will be discussed? Yeah, I think that the players, Not you wouldn't ask Hugh Freeze this, and you wouldn't even really ask maybe some assistant coaches this, but it'd be interesting to ask the players, give me the one dominant noticeable difference in culture and the way things are run since Hugh Freeze has stepped on campus. Mm. Tell me what is the most noticeable trait or, or the biggest thing that you can tell from a culture standpoint that's changed with you freeze being here. And I think it would be telling 
and interesting. Number one, to hear if different players have different takes. Sure. But if there's like a common theme, like if they're like, hey, he's engaging, he's with us constantly, the communication, open door, he's accessible, the way he interacts with recruits, you know, our strength and conditioning has taken a whole different level. All those kind of things. I, I, I really want to see what the players say about what the biggest difference culturally is since you free stepped on campus. Not not the whole coaching staff. I want to know Freeze in particular and how he what he has done to change culture, what they've noticed as, as far as the biggest difference. Do you think any national people try to bring up how his tenure at Ole Miss ended? Absolutely. It's going to be, look, if, be if, if, if local beat writers went after Harson for vaccination status in 2021, you're going to have national guys, especially guys from the Clarion Ledger in Jackson and Mississippi and some of those other places, absolutely ask, now, I don't know if it'll be in a one-on-one -on -one setting because I don't think Hugh Freeze will necessarily go on other, you know, shows that are, have to do – that's not Auburn. But at the I, podium – I think it'd be at the podium. Setting. At the podium? Yeah, yeah you'll have that. Someone's going to ask that question. They're going to ask what he's learned from the mistakes he's made and if he's, you know, in the same song and dance. And, and, and it'll be the usual suspects that ask it. I hope that Auburn's – Media, which you don't want to stifle anybody or censor anybody. They're allowed to ask whatever they want, I hope, hopefully. But I hope they're smart enough to not be Auburn's own worst enemy and bring that crap up. If somebody else from a national media perspective is going to do it, from ESPN or some kind of advocate that's going to say something or another state-run newspaper from Mississippi or Louisiana, okay, let them. I hope Auburn stays strictly to – things that matter between the lines. And that's all played out since he's been here. The Alabama media has had every opportunity to go down that tired road. I hope they go above board and stay high level and ask something that really is more important and, and put their thinking caps on and not be lazy with that take. Yeah, I don't think author media would do that. because I mean, they would, they've had the chance to do that already. And some folks did it you know, with uh, the opening presser, but that's kind of been it. So we'll see. No, I, we'll see. We'll see. I, I think it's... Hopefully, it's more about more about football than, yeah. than anything else. But Media Days tends to not be about football all the time, which is a shame. We're going to try oh, to be about football, though. We'll yeah. try to be about football. All right, speaking of football, Auburn may get a great football player to commit tomorrow. We discuss who that is next right here on Locked on Auburn. I want to encourage you to join the Locked on Auburn Discord. It is free. All you have to do is click the link in the episode description down below. Great access to me, to Daryl, to anybody that hops on the show. We're all in there. Would love to answer your questions. Christians. Malik Blockton, a uh, player that, that I think is really, really exciting. And I think he's got a lot of upside when you look at what he could bring um, to the defensive line uh, during his senior season, which is, of course, coming up, Daryl. But he's expected to announce his school tomorrow. Auburn is leading and really the only school that's got official predictions and crystal balls. Um, his brother is Marcus Harris, which, of course, is Auburn's defensive end slash defensive lineman. Blockton's going to play a similar role in his senior year of high school. He's 6'2", just shy of 270 pounds, got another year of high school football to really grow and develop, which I think he's going to have pretty solid size. But to me, the thing I like the most about this, Daryl, is it's Auburn's first lineman on either side of the ball in the 2024 class. We, we need to get that ball rolling, and I think it starts tomorrow. Very important lines of scrimmage, old adage. We've said it over and over, offensive and defensive lines. Auburn traditionally, even under Gus, has done a good job from a recruiting defensive line standpoint where it was lacking was in the offensive line. So it's good to get the lines of scrimmage guys going. I know that Granger Shook, the new Pike Road head football coach that came from Montgomery Trinity, is very high on this kid. I've seen social media posts and things that Granger's talked about. So it's a good get, and it's a good get because of, like you said, it's it. First of all, Pike Road is becoming like the Central Phoenix cities and some of these the Thompsons, and that they are emerging yeah. as a powerhouse in the state, even though they're only really four or five years old from that standpoint. But they are emerging as a top end program. So anytime you can get someone from that pipeline and from that from a you know lines of scrimmage perspective. It's a good get. And again, it's just domino effects. Um, mm -hmm. You, you want to start building some momentum, especially what happened, you know, obviously with the Cam Coleman situation. It's a good answer to pick up two recruits in the week. 
and then just hopefully keep the ball rolling. I, I guess Blockton is listed. Do you have him as a three or four star? Uh, I've got his two four seven page up here. He's a three star on two four seven, but he's a four star in the composite. So okay. we'll go four star. Yeah, more places have a four star than a three star. So that's good. Yeah, that's yeah, good. composites are important too. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good that's a good get for Auburn. Again, off you know offensive defensive line of scrimmage comes from a a really good program now. So that's a good that'll be a good get if he if he jumps on Saturday. Yeah, I did a show uh, about several guys that I watched tape on. In fact, the show is about Bryce Kane, D'Angelo Barber, and uh, Malik Blockton weeks ago, and we're about to add all three of those guys, assuming tomorrow goes the way it's supposed to. And these are just some of the notes. Primarily lined up a defense, did line up some of the three technique. Doesn't give up ground the line of scrimmage. He always stood his ground. Um, uses his long arms to throw blockers. He had a good first step. And then the only negative is he can play high when he's blocked out of gosh i can't read my handwriting out of the gate so every now and then he'll he'll play a little high but he's somewhat stronger than everybody he'll be able to recap or to, to bounce back out of it but I, I i think he's a good player and i think this is definitely just something that auburn needs you need as many defensive linemen and offensive linemen in this class as you possibly can and it doesn't really seem like the defensive linemen in in the state of alabama this year is as good as it normally is it seems like it's very slanted towards other positions this year which is going to happen there's only so much you can do about it but going out and getting a four-star in-state kid from an hour down the road that's that's a win that's a win no matter which way you put it and i'll say this having watched granger shook's teams for the last three years up close and personal he's a defensive minded head coach very very good his teams and his players are very good fundamentally so maybe some of that stuff that you know we saw and blocked in with some of the notes gets cleaned up because Granger Shook is such a fundamentalist and such a good guy coaching fundamentals on the defensive side of the ball. Just, just a thought. Just a thought. Does adding him help Hugh Freeze and his staff's pitch to Marcus Harris after the end of the season to stay another year? It depends. It's a great point, and, and I would say yes in in concept and in theory. But uh, it, all that gets and all that depends on what kind of year Marcus Harris has. Sure. If he really goes off and is a very good defensive end for Auburn, and, and really just it's tough. The position he plays, though, statistically, he's not going to pop off the page, right? He's not going to get a lot of sacks, that kind of thing. He may trade. get a lot of yeah. He may get a lot of tackles. So I don't know how much he can do to kind of improve his draft status. But if he does have a great year, and let's say he gets named to some second team, all defensive SEC teams, that kind That'd of thing, awesome. then yeah. that, that changes the narrative, then he probably goes. If not, this may be a little bit of a carrot to keep him. Yeah, yeah. Maybe make sure on the victory takes care of him a little extra. You get to play with your brother for another year. Yes. That'd be awesome. That'd be a really nice silver lining in all of this. Daryl Dabrich, how can people check out everything that you've got going on, my friend? Follow me on Twitter, DAP6410. Interact in the Discord Monday morning, 710 with Ben Taylor on WANI. Absolutely. Follow me on social, Zet Z Blackerby, and you can read all of our work at AuburnDaily.com. We will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.